Hello and welcome to Tax Matters. Really and truly, the year 2021 is now split right down the middle. The FRS Tax Pro Max began trending at the beginning of the month of June and it is still the rave of the moment. As you already know, the Tax Pro Max is the truly, fully end-to-end -end tax administration solution for the ease and convenience of both the taxpayer and the tax administrator. A large part of our offering today on tax matters will be devoted to bringing you up to speed as to what you require to come on board and to enjoy the multiple benefits that Tax Pro Max offers. Before then, our tax education segment which today is on taxing powers of the different tiers of government in Nigeria. There is also something from the Tax Appeal Tribunal. Pick a drink, cross your legs, and come along for information and education on taxation. We begin with task education, and this will center around some of the inquiries that we have been receiving from our viewers. Nigeria, as we all know, runs a three-tier administrative system, and quite naturally, tax administration runs on those lines. Taxes, levies, duties, and charges, by whatever names they are called, are divided between the three tiers of government. The federal government collects a total of nine taxes, while the state governments and the FCT Abuja collect 25 taxes within their respective boundaries. The local governments and the area councils of the FCT, which largely collect charges and levies, have a total of 21 taxes. Prominent among the federal government taxes are companies' income tax, Petroleum Profit Tax, Value Added Tax. Limited liability companies, wherever they are located in Nigeria, pay companies' income tax to the Federal Inland Revenue Service, the taxing authority for the Federation. Value Added Tax is also collected on behalf of the whole Federation by the FRS, and some so collected are shared among the three tiers of government along the lines on your screen. At the state level, the major tax is the personal income tax, which is collected from persons resident within the boundaries of the state. The FCT IRS also collects personal income tax from residents of the FCT. Personal income tax has two legs. Pay as you earn, charged on their monuments, or salaries, if you like, of persons in paid employment and direct assessment, which is charged on the business activities of one-man businesses, small enterprises, partnerships, sole proprietorships, entities that operate businesses but are not limited liability companies. Remember we said earlier that limited liability companies pay companies' income tax through the FRS. In the case of one-man businesses or such enterprises, they are charged to tax under personal income tax direct assessment, collectible by state internal revenue services and the FCT IRS in the case of Abuja residents. Before we move on, let us also pass across a crucial piece of information on how to take ownership of your payee liability. And this is that you can calculate or determine your payee liability by simply visiting www.frs.gov.ng and clicking on Task Calculator, and voila, your destiny is in your hands. Lastly, on personal income tax. Personal income tax is actually a federal law, and what that means is that what Adamu pays in Bauchi is what Amaka pays in Imo if they're on the same salary. Same in Lagos, same in Kano. No cobble more, no cobble less. Next episode, we will continue this expose on the Nigerian tax system. Thank 
you for staying with us. Tax Pro Max is the new tax administration solution from the stable of the Federal Inland Revenue Service aimed at improving tax administration, tax compliance, and payment. Tax Pro Max enables seamless registration, filing of tax returns, payment, and automatic credit of taxes to taxpayers' accounts, among other features. The platform also provides a single view to taxpayers for all FRS transactions. Tax Pro Max took effect from June 7, 2021, with the fact that all Naira denominated tax returns are to be filed via the Tax Pro Max solution in order to generate the obligatory payment reference number, PRN. How do you get on the Tax Pro Max train? To register on the Tax Pro Max platform, the taxpayer should visit www.frs.gov.ng to download the taxpayer update form, which is to be filled and sent back to the FRS. In the alternative, the taxpayer can visit the nearest FRS office to register for e-filing upon which the taxpayer is issued with login details with which he or she can log on to www.taxpromax.frs.gov.ng. With this, the taxpayer can file tax returns and pay through any of the payment gateways. The system automatically generates a unique payment reference number for the transaction. Tax Pro Max is for all taxes value-added tax, company's income tax, capital gains tax, withholding tax, and many more. Still on FRS Tax Pro Max, we want to share with you the tax returns filing and payment processes for company's income tax Education Tax and the Nigerian Information Technology Development Levy. For example, to file company's income tax returns, the taxpayer is required to first log on to www.taxpromax.frs.gov.ng and then click on Login as displayed on the screen. The next step is to fill in email address and password and then click on Login. When you log in, the system takes you to the next page which will display different tasks the taxpayer may wish to perform on the home page. From the dashboard, the taxpayer may want to check the taxes due. So click on taxes due. Then under the action column, click on process and it will take you to the schedules. The system will display list of schedules on a page with status marked X or ticked if completely filled. Then click on the shadow marked X to proceed and fill the necessary information. Next episode, we shall be taking this a bit further to bring you up to speed on more on the Tax Pro Max. Tax Promas has already started attracting commendation from stakeholders, banks, corporate and individual users, audit and tax consulting firms, as well as civil society organizations. The Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Huriwa, has issued a press statement commending the FRS for introducing Tax Pro Max. In the press release under the hand of the National Coordinator, Emmanuel Omobiko, and the National Media Affairs Director, Ms. Zainab Yusuf, the Civil Rights Group described the one-stop online platform Tax Promas as a laudable effort by the FRS in ensuring that taxpayers enjoy a seamless tax experience, thereby easing tax compliance. Tax Promas went live on June 7, 2021. Embrace it. Use it. Every day, my people, they for work. Some they do office work. Some get it, they own business. So, all of them, them want good road. Constant power. 
for better life. Oh, whether now office work, oh, oh yeah. Pay your tax. Whether now your own business, oh. Pay your tax. If you want a better life, oh. Pay your tax. Now your civic responsibility. Pay your ha! tax. Better soup. Now money could come, oh. oh yes. Nothing goes for nothing, my brother. If you want portable water, security and hospital for make life jolly. That's right. Good roads, good hospitals, portable water, adequate security all come from taxpayers' money. Play your part in making Nigeria great. Everybody, small scale, big companies, entrepreneurs, do the right thing. Pay your tax. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS. You are still on to tax matters. The Tax Appeal Tribunal has been busy, very busy. The TAT has eight zonal tribunals located in each of the six geopolitical zones of the country and Lagos and Abuja. The Lagos Zonal Tribunal has three panels. Tax matters has been on the trail of the zonal tribunals lately. On Thursday, 24th June, Panel 3 delivered its judgment in the suit involving Citibank Nigeria Limited and the Lagos Internal Revenue Service, LRS. The case is in respect of severance payments made to three former employees of the bank, as well as location allowance paid to one other member of staff who was transferred from a branch of the bank in Ibadan, Oyo State, to another branch in Lagos. The LRS had insisted that the payments were wrongfully excluded by the bank in computing the gross emoluments of the affected staff for the purpose of computing the applicable payee remittances and had therefore imposed additional assessment upon which the bank approached the tribunal. The severance payment as well as the, re re the relocation allowances paid on account of the remittances and transfer was excluded from the gross income of the employees uh, in computing the applicable allowances. By a demand notice dated the ninth day of September 2019 and received by the appellant on the twelfth day of September 2019, the respondent imposed an additional payee allowance of six million. 448,000 Naira, 791 Naira, 93 Kobo. For the 2017 uh, tax year, the additional payee liability was split into the penalties and interest on the appellant. The appellant, through its tax advisors, objected to the demand notice by a letter dated the 7th day of October 2019, delivered to the respondent on the 9th day of October 2019. Their grounds were as follows. One, that the respondent failed to grant personal relief on the reallocation allowance and severance payment made by the appellant to its employees, therefore overstating the payee tax due from the employees. Two, that the respondent annualized for tax purposes, income of employees who spent less than 12 months in the appellant employment, thus overstating the income figures of such employment. Three, that having objected timelessly to the respondent demand notice, the appellant is not liable to pay the accruing interest and the penalties. The respondent, by its notice of Refusal to amend Nora dated the 15th day of January and received by the appellant on the 20th day of January 2020, rejected the appellant objection, which in response, the appellant by a later dated the 25th day of January 2020, further referred the demand notice and objected to same with comprehensive and detailed explanation contending that the position taken by the respondent was contrary to law. The appellant being dissatisfied with the decision of the respondent 
not to discharge a demand notice contained in its NORA, challenged the said decision via a notice of appeal to this honorable tribunal dated and filed on the 19th day of February 2020. In their notice of appeal, the following issues were raised for determination. Issue number one is to whether the appellant is liable to pay the alleged additional pay liability in the light of the respondent failure to apply the statutory consolidated relief allowance on the severance payment made to the appellant employees being a part of the employee's gross income. Number two, as to whether the appellant is liable to pay the alleged additional payee liability in the light of the respondent failure to recognize and apply the statutory consolidated relief allowance on reallocation allowance made to one of the employees being a part of his gross income. Number three, as to whether the appellant is liable to pay the alleged liability additional uh, PE liability arising from the respondent erroneous annualization of the income of the employees who spent less than 12 months in the appellant employment in the year 2017. And finally, number four, as to whether the appellant is liable to pay interest and penalties. After due consideration of argument from both sides, the tribunal delivered its judgment. This dispute by the understanding of this honorable tribunal was caused by the lacuna in the law which both parties have taken advantage of. It is therefore the considered opinion of this honorable tribunal that the apex court in this country have always insisted that where there is an ambiguity in the law, it should always be resolved in favor of the taxpayer. On the basis of the relevant laws and the fact presented before this honorable tribunal, we came to the conclusion that the appellant cannot and should not be forced to pay the said payee and withholding allowance for the whole year. They can only pay for the period within which the said employees were on their payroll because that is both in the spirit and the provisions of the law. On issue number four, as to whether the appellant is liable to pay interest and penalties. By the relevant provisions of section 74 subsection 1 of Peter, withholding tax must be remitted within 30 days from the day the amount was deducted or the time the, time the duty to deduct arose. The prescribed time for remitting pay is 10 days after the end of any month as provided by paragraph 8 of the operations of pays uh, scheme regulation. From a combined reading of the foregoing provisions, it will mean that where the withholding tax or pay is not remitted within the time prescribed by statute, penalty and interest become due and payable on the unremitted tax from the very moment the time prescribed by statute expires. It is pertinent to note that the provisions of section 32 subsection 1A and B of the Federal Inland Revenue Establishment uses the word shall, which connotes that the relevant tax authority has no discretion in imposing penalty and interest on these issues. Once it is established that tax was not paid or remitted within the time prescribed by law, the relevant tax authority must, on the grounds of the word shall, impose penalty and interest on that taxpayer. However, this can only be limited to the time within which the employee were under the payroll of the employer. It is therefore the considered opinion and view of this honorable tribunal that the liability of the appellant with respect to interest and penalty should be limited only to those amounts 
with respect to the PE that was collected during the period that the said employees are on the payroll of the appellant and or those of such pay which the appellant were under the legal obligation to collect and remit to the relevant tax authority, the Labor State Board of Internal Revenue in this case. In view of the foregoing, this honorable tribunal came up with the following decisions. Number one, that on issue number one, this tribunal has resolved that the revised demand as uh, notice served on the appellant uh, by the respondent in relation to the loss of employment is legal and legitimate, and therefore should be paid. On issue number two, it is resolved by this honourable tribunal that since the dispute was caused by a lacuna in the law, which both parties have taken advantage of, these ambiguities, based on the cited authorities above, should be resolved in favor of the taxpayer. And therefore, the additional assessment in relation to the relocation allowance, it is hereby vacated. On issue number three, the tribunal results that although the annualization of the income of the affected staff is in order for the purposes of prorata, it is not in order for the purposes of imposing pay. The liability of the appellant should therefore be limited only to the period that the said employees were on the payroll and in the employment of the employer. On issue number four, this honorable tribunal came to the conclusion that the appellant is liable to pay penalties and interest, but that amount should be, should be restricted only to the period within which the said employees were on the payroll of the employer and when they were still the employees of the employer. And so we decided. We are coasting home. On Wednesday, 23rd June 2021, some members of staff of the FRS returned to the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja in the ongoing ESCC case of alleged collection of DT tour allowances without embarking on the trips. The Director of Communications and Liaison Department FRS, Dr. Abdullahi Ismaila Ahmad, has issued a public statement clarifying the circumstances surrounding the case, stating emphatically that the case in question predates the appointment of the current Executive Chairman FRS, Muhammad Nami. While appealing to esteemed taxpayers and stakeholders to continue to have confidence in the capacity of the FRS to deal with internal issues, while at the same time not losing sight of its mandate of generating tax revenue for the government, Dr. Ahmad went ahead to recall the facts of the ongoing case as follows. The ongoing trial of the staff of the service followed a petition to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, about the alleged fraudulent practices which the accused allegedly committed between 2017 and 2018. At the latest hearing of the matter on Wednesday, June 23, 2021, the court fixed the trial date for the case on September 28, 2021. The public may record that the alleged violation being tried in the court took place between January 2017 and December 2018. The case concerns DT Tour Allowances, DTA, approved by the former management for travels that were allegedly not undertaken.
It has been an interesting time and we do hope that once again we have been able to broaden your knowledge on the workings of the Nigerian tax system. Let's do this again next week on this same station, same day of the week, same time of the day. Don't forget to watch this episode and our previous episodes on our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. I'm Chamako Hauchi. Have a great week.